Hello, Bill Molino here, Fast Play War Games and Nottingham War Gaming Group. And tonight, I'm doing a quick video on Steve Jackson Games. So, I'm going to try, the, try to keep this at 8 minutes, and I have just about a minute and a half per game. So, we're going to start off with Ogre. Ogre is a futuristic tank battle game with robotic tanks. It was a little pocket game. This is the giant 40 pound designer edition. It came out about 10 years ago and it does weigh about 40 pounds. And uh, if anything I could say if you never heard of the Ogre game it's sort of in the time period of uh, maybe the Terminator movies. So we're going to start off here with a lot of the, the micro games by Steve Jackson. These were incredibly neat for the time period. They were a couple dollars and for the price point so this is RAM speed and there's our map the counters. Now the rule books were all pretty much the same format and they were quite well written for the time period um, so that's Ram Speed. And going on with another naval game, which I think was incredibly unique at the time, was Fire When Ready. And this is the Spanish American War era, which was not covered at all in wargaming in this time period. So you have the open sea, which is sort of brown and beige rather than blue. And then you have basic counters and of course these counters are all the same they're very thin cardboard they're not thick like an SPI or Avalon Hill game counter at the time so you have your different ships for Spanish American War naval and the rule books same format and a lot of scenarios in here and it's pretty easy to play so that's our Spanish American War uh, naval game, Fire When Ready. Now Stalin's Tanks came out, and I really, really like this. I have like four or five copies. Um, I even made my own counters, and other people have. This gets pretty darn close to Squad Leader from Avalon Hill. Very detailed counters as far as armor ratings, firepower for the weapons. Includes some infantry, half tracks, and of course, once again, very thin cardboard counters. Nice little map. And the rule book's the same format. It's not really that many pages, so you can get playing this uh, in an hour or two with no problem. So we leave the uh, Eastern Front and Rommel's Panzers. Now, Closest thing to this was Avalon Hills to Brook. And that game was uh, one chart after another to determine the outcome. So this is the African Desert. And you have the Stuarts and the Grants, Panzer 3Js. And the same type of counters. And the same style rule book. And I actually like this. It had a little bit different combat system. Than Stalin's tanks. It was an odds ratio system, but it still was, um, it was pretty detailed for its time. Going into the, staying with the World War II uh, time period, we got to hit something here on One Page Bulge. This was uh, a one page game, and I've enlarged it uh, probably over 10, 15 years ago with extra big counters. And it was whenever it was snow, um, I found this game to be fun, fast. The setup hexes actually have the uh, you know, where you place the, the counters. And for the price point of this game in the time period, I thought it was quite realistic. And I enjoyed it. And uh, I actually played it a few months ago. Well, we're leaving... Uh, World War II, and we're going to hit the awful green 
things from outer space. Now this is a deluxe edition, but I had the, the pamphlet book and everyone really loved this game in the early 80s. It was just a wild, crazy game. If you've never heard of it, it was really a cool game for its time. My son Ethan and I play this still. And Bill Eckerson of the Hawks, he actually built the spaceship in, I think it's 15 or 20 millimeter scale with figures. And we've played that a few times with the Hawks Wargaming Group. And then moving on into more space age world, we have Warp War. Now, this had a weird combat system. And you picked your speed and shield strength and... I wouldn't say it was like Star Trek or Star Wars. You had ships that had like a warp drive that would follow these lines. And then a regular drive where you'd only can move one hex. And the rule book, of course, is just like all the other ones. And some neat little graphics on it. So it's a... Uh, so that's Warp War. Uh, Played it a lot in like 10th grade. I remember somebody had a whole galaxy they, they made. Now in our, in the box, they would have this little list of all the different games that they produced. And look at that. It's the front and then the back. I mean, they were producing a lot of games in a in these little mini boxes. Now I didn't bring out the uh, Melee Wizard Death Test games and uh, Dragons of Under Earth and the Larabith um, and all the fantasy games. I was told to keep this between 8 and 10 minutes on my uh, Facebook chart. I did a poll so uh, the plan was to do these and then if this uh, Maybe in a week or two, I'll do the Steve Jackson, all the meta games of the fantasy line. And maybe some of the other um, futuristic sci-fi games. So we're almost at eight minutes. And I don't want to get everyone bored. So I'm going to say thank you. Be safe. Be kind. Be courteous. And to those that um, have backed my Kickstarter game of the Battle of Brandywine... Thank you very much. Have a great day.